Mark Belinsky was the biggest asshole that Christian had ever met in his two years as a bartender. The bastard would always come on Wednesday night, when people were scarce to be found in his tiny bar next to Sagagoon Beach. Apparently, the people in this small town were either at the beach or too busy with their own jobs to have a drink on Wednesday, which meant Danny's shifts weren't always very interesting. Of course, Christian always assumed that the only reason Mr. Bolinsky was available to come in on a Wednesday night was because nobody would hire him for any job. Christian sat behind the bar on one of those boring, rainy Wednesday nights and thought back to when Mr. Bolinsky first stumbled into his bar. A few months previously, Christian was quietly working at the bar when a rather disheveled gentleman burst in and sat down. His face was clearly unshaven, and his black hair was an absolute mess. He adjusted himself before turning towards Christian and uttering a small remark. Filthy place, isn't it? Christian eyed the man's grin and raised an eyebrow. The man noticed this and snickered. Come on, the floors aren't swept, there's still some dirty drinks all around, and plenty more. The man stated in a very snarky tone. Hey, if you don't like it, then don't come, Christian replied, equally snarky. The man laughed before replying, Oh, but I can't stop myself. This is the only place I could grab liquor in town, so I'm stuck looking at your disgusting place whenever I want to grab some whiskey. Before you keep blabbering on, who exactly are you? Mark Belinsky. Call me Mr. Belinsky. I recently moved into a dreadful apartment complex. What was the name again? Beldia? Yeah, Beldia Apartment Complex or something. Anyway, I'm applying for a job. It won't be much, but <laughs> it should be way better than just bartending. Mr. Belinsky insultingly said. After that, Mr. Belinsky ordered a drink and the night progressively got worse until he left in an incredibly tipsy state. If Mr. Belinsky was already fairly honest with what he thought of people normally, drinking must have made him the most honest man in the world. The routine was the same on those days. Mr. Belinsky would trip inside, insult something related to Christian, have too many drinks, gossip about some pretty lady he had... A fun time with earlier that week and wander onto the streets, rinse and repeat every Wednesday. Of course, in addition to being insensitive towards pretty much everybody around him, Mr. Belinsky was an arrogant and untidy slob. He stumbled around so much, anybody who noticed him trying to simply go from point A to point B would think he had some sort of walking abnormality. In other words, Mr. Belinsky wasn't just a bitch, but an incompetent bitch. Despite this, there was still one highlight to those Wednesday nights, and that was a woman named Peg. At first, Christian liked her when she carefully walked through the doors and quietly asked for a drink. As time passed, however, Christian fell in love just by picking up on her little mannerisms and other qualities she had. Although she was a knockout, she was also rather reserved and seemingly intelligent. The way she carried herself seemed to be quite independent as well, which was an attribute that Christian admired. The way she would sip a drink and enjoy the peace of Wednesday night, the way she would occasionally run her fingers through her wavy blonde hair. The list goes on. Christian was completely infatuated with what he considered his own personal goddess. The problem was that Christian had never the guts to actually say much to Peg. Christian was not only shy, but also very embarrassed when talking about his personal life. For example... Christian couldn't imagine Peg liking the fact that he still lived in the solitary house next to the Beldia apartment with his dad, who seemed to only be in the house whenever he had to do taxes. 
because he couldn't even afford an apartment. It also didn't help that Peg usually didn't stay very long in the bar. Therefore, the time Christian actually spent with Peg was so small that it was almost overshadowed by Mr. Bolinsky's obnoxious, lengthy appearance later in the night. Christian wished to just kick Mr. Bolinsky out and never let him back in. But his portly boss, who almost always worked from home, acknowledged him as one of their most profitable customers, as he was essentially getting himself wasted every week. Besides, since rarely anybody was there on Wednesdays, his boss declared that his rude actions weren't annoying other customers. The only person who had to put up with him was Christian, and to him, it was akin to torture. As Christian thought back to all these moments, he realized it was 8 o'clock at night. He grew excited as this was the regular time that Peg would come in for a short time, as brief as it was. Christian made sure that his short, brown hair was neat and that his breath was nice and minty in order to continue making a good impression. However, Christian didn't see Peg coming in. Christian figured she was simply late and waited anxiously. And Fifteen minutes passed with no sign of Peg. Christian's hopes slowly sunk. After 30 minutes, he simply gave up on waiting for Peg. Cursing under his breath, he went back to his regular work, thinking that maybe Peg, like almost everybody else on Wednesdays, was busy this day. Mr. Bolinsky almost always showed up not long after 9pm on these days, but this time, he didn't end up stumbling in until 10 o'clock two hours before closing. Christian immediately frowned and thought, but didn't bother uttering a swear word. Damn it. The night continued as well, with Mr. Belinsky drinking way too many shots, until Mr. Belinsky suddenly stopped the blabbering about how much he disagreed with the world around him and grinned. Now, Christian had never seen this sort of thing happen before, the asshat always finished his negative thoughts on everything before he would delve into more insults. This pause made Christian give Mr. Belinsky a questioning look. Mr. Belinsky? Mr. Belinsky suddenly shook a tiny bit before replying back to Christian. Oh, I'm sorry. I, just, I was just thinking about that sexy chick I had a good time with earlier today. Damn, what a looker. Christian didn't want Mr. Belinsky to continue, but he knew he would anyway. Despite being drunk, Mr. Belinsky was able to tell the tale rather smoothly. Well, you see, I was walking out of my room at that rather awful apartment when I bumped into this gorgeous girl. She was carrying a DVD rental and I accidentally knocked it over, you see. So, I apologized and picked it up for her. However... Before she walked away, I sparked up a conversation about that particular DVD. We talked some more and we actually found out we had pretty close rooms to each other. I'm in room 21. She lives in room 23. Anyway, I invited her to my place to watch the movie and she accepted. The film was some trash romantic comedy, but after that I moved into first base, if you know what I mean. We kept going for a while, and at the end of it, we exchanged phone numbers and she planned to meet me again tomorrow morning. Talk about a successful date. Now, Christian was used to this sort of topic each week. However, what shocked him the most was what Mr. Belinsky said next. Her name is Peg. I don't think I'll go steady with her for a while. If there ain't anyone else that catches my eye. Christian froze. He felt as though his heart was shattering into small pieces and being smashed by a hammer wielded by nobody other than Mr. Belinsky. That girl that he had eyed and had wished to talk to since forever was going out with this pig, this absolute slob of a human being. What did she even see in him? How could she, the goddess among humans, 
see anything other than repulsion in that sick slime of a man. If there was one wish Christian would have, it would be to have Mr. Belinsky die. He eyed Mr. Belinsky, who was now chattering about his useless political views, and realized that he could grant his own wish. Within minutes, Christian could knock Mr. Belinsky unconscious and murder him. It would be just so easy to repeatedly bash Mr. Belinsky's head until he finally fell to the ground. Nobody bothers coming to the bar on Wednesday, especially as late as it was. So if Christian was to achieve his wish, he might as well go for it now. He grabbed the bottle of alcohol, but Mr. Belinsky hadn't noticed. It caused Christian to feel a brief sense of regret. Could he commit murder? Could he live with the fact that he had ended the life of another man, no matter how terrible a person they were? And he was about to let go of the bottle when he visualized Mr. Belinsky and Peg together. He could almost hear Peg's moans and pure wanting for Mr. Belinsky. The most vivid thought was that of Mr. Belinsky smirking in absolute pleasure and lust right at Peg. He grasped the bottle firmly once more, and in a quick movement, covered Mr. Belinsky's mouth and began bashing him on the head. Mr. Belinsky continually struggled, but had the disadvantage of being very, very drunk. He might talk all night when drunk, but he certainly couldn't move all right. It didn't take long until Christian was sure he was unconscious. He watched Mr. Belinsky collapse on the floor his skull clearly bleeding. However, he wasn't dead yet. Christian couldn't congratulate himself until he finished the job. He could have been very brutal with the ending, but he decided that he didn't want blood to get everywhere around the pub. It would just make extra work for him to cover it up, and he didn't need that. Instead, he thought of a rather humorous and easy way of killing him. Christian remembered that today was a very rainy day and that an unconscious, drunk man could easily drown in a puddle if he wasn't careful. Therefore, Christian lightly dragged Mr. Belinsky out the back door of the bar and found a puddle within seconds. Making sure nobody saw him, he slammed Mr. Belinsky's face straight into the puddle. He stood there for a long time, looking at the now-drowned Mr. Belinsky. It didn't matter that the man had drowned rather quickly. Christian was just admiring his actions. The feeling he had when he slammed Mr. Belinsky into the puddle was one of intense satisfaction and even euphoria. The man who had constantly made the latter parts of Wednesday night a torturous experience would no longer bother him. However, he couldn't bask in the feeling for too long. He clearly couldn't afford to move somewhere else, so he needed to be able to hide the corpse well enough, so it would never be found. Staying calm, Christian began to theorize on possible places to bury Mr. Belinsky's corpse, before he thought of Sakoon Beach. He quickly took a glance over near Sakoon Beach to make sure that nobody was there. The light from the moon seemed to light up the beach, but from what Christian saw, there seemed to be no other lights or any sort of person there. Luckily, he did notice that there was a small boat still on the beach. And so he dragged Mr. Belinsky from the outside to the front of the bar and closed up, deciding that he had a pretty good reason to close early tonight. He eventually reached his cheap used car, popped up in the trunk, and stuffed the corpse inside. He drove for about 45 seconds, after all it was right next to the bar, until driving pretty close to the tide. Pulling out a flashlight and putting it in his pocket just in case he needed it, Christian opened the trunk and pulled Mr. Belinsky's corpse to the nearby boat. After pulling him onto the boat, he saw that the boat was motorized, and had a sign talking about how it should only be used by the lifeguard. Ignoring this, Christian was glad that there was still gas in it, 
and didn't require any keys. Being of a relatively strong build, Christian pushed the boat several feet before it was finally on the water. Then he got in and started it up. Relieved that the boat wasn't very loud and probably wouldn't alert anybody nearby, he began to drive it. He drove for about five minutes or so before he decided it was time to ditch the body. Dragging the body out of the boat, Christian took one last glance at Mr. Belinsky's repulsive face before pushing the corpse off and quickly watching it disappear into the deep, dark ocean. And immediately, relief went through his mind. Thank God. The drive back made him feel as though a weight had been lifted. He no longer had to worry about Mr. Belinsky ever causing him any sort of trouble ever again. And after attempting to put the boat back where he thought he originally saw it, Christian began to walk to his car and thought about how successfully this had gone. He was sure that nobody would ever find Mr. Belinsky's body from the bottom of the ocean. Hell, nobody would even question who or where he was for a long time. After all, nobody cares about... It was during that thought process that Christian remembered something he had completely forgotten after killing Mr. Belinsky that could completely ruin his plan. He forgot about a key person due to his joy of murdering Mr. Belinsky, as well as his fixation on getting rid of the body. And this person could easily notice that Mr. Belinsky was missing. From there, the police could get involved, and from there, the person in question could easily report that Mr. Belinsky was going to the bar that night he disappeared. And when Christian realized this, the words of Mr. Belinsky flashed through his mind. We kept going for a while and at the end of it, we exchanged phone numbers and she planned to meet me again tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. As Christian walked to his car, he sat there for several minutes contemplating if the excitement of killing another victim would truly compensate for the pain of killing the love of his life. Even if he did kill Peg, would that solve his problem? Wouldn't that just be another murder to slide under the rug and try to cover up? What if Peg also had a family? Christian imagined heading to her apartment quietly and gazing upon his idol before intentionally murdering her. He imagined Peg opening her pretty little eyes to see the bartender, and with such innocence, not understand why he would do this, unless he told her how he felt. He felt like he was stronger than anyone tonight. She was a goddess, and tonight, he might as well have been the worthy god to match her. He could drive there, stop by casually, confess his love. Then they'd... Well, they'd run away together. And then... Christian closed his eyes and took a deep breath. Eventually, he made his decision. He proceeded to put his car key into the ignition... He turned the car key, typed Belladia into his GPS, and began to drive.